you were huge New England fans. What did you think of Cam Newton the other day? What was, what was your he take? He was terrific. First, I, yeah. I loved his outfit when he came up. Out of the car. <laughs> I like that. Um, but I thought he played well. I thought, um, yeah, it was, it was good. We won. And that's yeah. the bottom line. We won. But, yeah, he ran the ball, nine, what is he, 15 for 19 from right. uh, passing the ball. So, yeah, it was a – now, I'm concerned that he's going to get hurt. But other than that, um, it, was, it was a good performance. Dude, he's a big guy. Like, it's hard to tackle him. Like, do you really want to go after him, you know, coming at you? I mean, no I think question. it's just great. I don't know much. I don't know much about football. But, you know, it just seems like he doesn't, you know, those hit. He doesn't take, you know, hard hits. Right. Um, you know, so. And he's, I, I would assume that he's smarter than he was, you know, early in his career where he was trying to take everybody on. So, yeah, we're excited. You know, Tom, Tom who? Right. <laughs> How about his post-game press conference? What did he have, like some yellow thing and the tie yeah. and the hat? That was great. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what, where he gets his, his fashion from, but, um, you know, Tom was a, Tom's fashion was a little bit different than, than Cam's, but it's, it, it's good to have that, that, that personality in the locker room. Oh, it's great. I mean, it, you're right, because Tom, the biggest thing he did one year was he came out with, like, long hair, you know, or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. This? You know, now I got my mom and dad asking me about, like, what do you think of this guy and what's the stuff he's wearing? I'm like, yeah, I know. It's just it's kind of an act. <laughs> but <laughs> it's good. It gives yeah. us another personality, which I, I think is, is good. That's good. That's good. Now, look at, hey, and you know this, because I love coming up to your place, and I know there's probably not a lot of people that seem to say that, you know, but I know why, because it's such a great – destination for basketball i mean that's why you go there your fans are awesome i like the town i mean you know and i, I don't know how much time i would be able to spend there so that's what i've kind of wondered what the heck you guys have been doing right now with everything happening it's a difficult i, I think the, I, I think you know people get lost and i think when, when they look at you know to Olean or, or the southern tier um you know they only see it in january february um but you know now it's it's beautiful. The, the, the spring, the fall, uh, the summer, it's terrific up here. A lot of lakes, you know, so, you know, you fish, you hunt, you play a lot of golf. Um, there's plenty to do. It's, I always say it's like, you know, Syracuse, you know, they, they get great players and they've had a, you know, coach Bay, coach Bam has had a great program forever. And it's, it's, it's colder in Syracuse than it is in only in New York. Right. You know, and they, they've had a lot of success. So it's a great place. It's, you know, I always say there's, you know, during the basketball season, there's not much distraction. It's, it's, it's a basketball town. It's a basketball school. And as you said, it, it's a great place to come and watch a game. Um, you know, it's just, there's a lot of excitement. There's not a lot of places in the country that, that have the enthusiasm that, that Bonaventure has in the rally center. So, um, but off season, there's plenty to do. If you like to play golf and fish and hunt and you know, that type of stuff, you're not going to go to the beach. Um, right. But at the same time, you know, you, you have lakes and it's a, it's a, I've been here 13 going on my 14th year and it's, um, you know, I've never looked back. I, we, me and the, and the family, we, we really like it here. Yeah. See, you're absolutely right. I never even think I'm always up there only in January, February. I mean, that's yeah, it's cold everywhere. Right. But you know something, it, it's 70 degrees in Florida's gym, just like it's 70 degrees in our gym, you know, <laughs> in, in January and February, you know, right. so it's, you know, we may have two or three, weeks longer of winter than you know some people have but it's a great place and I, I, I really like it I'm coming up there in the summer for heaven's sake and we're gonna go play some golf no wait do you that? Play golf? I thought are you a golfer no I don't think oh yeah I could play yeah, golf you, every okay. day all right you yeah. love golf good I'm Bartlett, play golf Bartlett Country Club Bartlett Country Club is the club and yeah you're welcome anytime all right that's awesome yeah I figured you have some connections so yeah I'm gonna do that <laughs> Absolutely. You're welcome. Anytime. We'll show you a great time. Okay, good. So I'm, I'm not going to do it just a January, February trip this year. I mean, uh, I will, you don't I'll... see the true Olean. You see the right. true Olean from a basketball perspective, but you don't see, you know, we call it O-Town. You don't see O-Town when it's, you know, right. when the sun's out and, and it's warm. It's not a bad, you know, situation. Though. I got the, with the hotels right across the street. I got my Dunkin' Donuts right next door there. And then you go right across to the, do you spend yeah. a lot of time at Dunkin' Donuts? And that Dunkin' Donuts is my place every exactly. morning. Um, but it's, it's, there's no traffic here. It's 10 minutes. If you get caught at the train tracks, it's 11 minutes. So <laughs> a lot to say about it. A lot of positive nine, things to say. Nine points away from another free beverage, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I use this all the time. Do you use the app? <laughs> Uh, no, I'm not, I'm not oh. tech savvy at all. No, no, no. What am I talking I about? You get a free card. coffee. What's that? You get a free coffee every time. You don't need this. <laughs> yeah. Free donut. 
Okay. Now, I don't need free donuts. <laughs> no, we don't. But you know what? There's a trick. I was over at one the other day uh, here in Jersey, and I was like, they were closing, and I don't usually get it this late, but I'm like, I didn't get my coffee today, and I was ticked off. I want to go in. So it's like a little before 8 o'clock, and they're closing. They're like, well, hold on, sir, before you go, like, we have all these donuts, so we're like, we're going to throw them all away. Like, do, do you want some? And I'm like, yeah, and I hate donuts. I don't even eat them. I'm like, what am I doing? And they gave me a dozen donuts and then like a whole yeah. box of munchkins. I guess if you probably go in late, like before a store closes, you might get a bunch of free stuff. I, I've never done that, but I may try. You do know, I do. I do get my AARP um, discount. <laughs> I do get that. <laughs> don't give me that. You're not there yet. Come on, come on. I am. Oh, I am. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome, man. I. I'll tell you, this is, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know how many more times we're going to hear, you know, unprecedented and, you know, this mm -hmm. is, I, I get it. I mean, it's, I don't even know. I just kind of wondering what you've been doing from your perspective. But. Yeah, you know something, as I told our team, you can, you just have to control what you can control. And, you know, right now, um, you know, control how, how, you know, much stronger we can get, how much better shape we can get in, you know, increasing our, our skill level, you know, build up, you know, the chemistry of our team you can't worry about things that that you can't control and you know that it's sad that pandemic is a, is a horrible thing and you know we'll get through it and, and you know we'll have a season and when that time comes you know we got to be as prepared as we can you know so that's what we're doing you know it's you hear all these rumors about when season's going to start and you know and, and maybe the season won't start you just you should you know concentrate on what you can do and what we can do right now is try to be as, as good as we can and have as good a preseason as we can. And that's what we're trying to, that's what we're trying to do. Talking to a lot of people and, you know, I know I've tried to do this and then come up with things that, you know, we can do better and make adjustments and make changes. Is there something that you could pinpoint that you probably said you wouldn't have done or you did do, you know, with everything that has happened and like make yeah. adjustments or improvements? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, you know, once the Atlantic 10 um, tournament was canceled and we came home and, um, you know, we stayed on campus, I think, for like 10 more days, and then uh, the school went, went virtual. Um, you know, so you're at home, and, you know, it's, you know, there wasn't much to do. So it's, it's, I think in the business, sometimes the longer you're in the business, you may get stale because it's like you do the same thing over and over again. And I think this, this five or six months that we had um, that was different, you know, it, it was more time to, to look at other people and what they do, try to get you know, some more ideas of, you know, from offense, defense. Um, so to me, it was, it was five or six months of, of, of really trying to learn more about the profession that we're in, um, you know, X's and O's. And I watched more tape than I've ever watched um, on opponents and, and um, you know, what, what other people in the business do. And it, it, was, it was enlightening. Um, I, like I said, I think sometimes you just get, get so caught up in your ways and, you know, basketball coaches is just like you do it, you know, every year you do the same thing, unless that same thing doesn't work and then you may change. Um, but I think that the three of uh, four, five, six months that we've been caught in isolation, I think is, you know, I think we've done a good job in trying to take advantage of it. All right. So let me ask you this when I hear you say this and, and every coach, of course, I mean, watching film, watching tape, watching film, yeah. like to all the fans or anybody out there that when we just hear that, we just say, yeah, okay, he's watching the game. What are you looking for? What are you breaking down? What I don't want to say what takes so long, but I mean, <laughs> I don't really, but you know what I mean? Like every, that's what everybody does, and that's all they do. Like basketball perspective, I can't even get into football. I haven't said yeah. football is a whole different. Ball. Oh my gosh! Right? What are you doing, and what are you looking at breaking down? Just tell me. Yeah, you're just trying to get better, you know. And you look at your stats, and you know, like last year, we didn't do a very good job in, in three point field goal percentage. And so you look at tape over and, you know, every game, all right, what did we do wrong? What did we do um, well? And, and how can we correct those? You know, like we doubled the post a lot last year, and I think that gave up, a, you know, allowed teams to, to shoot a higher percentage. Um, you know, just like, you know, X's and O's and, you know, what we ran, how we ran it, you know, what mistakes we made. Because the little things are the big things. You know, setting a screen – you know, just a, a foot from where you're supposed to be. It's all about execution. And as I tell our team all the time, it's, it's not what we run, it's how we run it, the execution, the speed of it. You know, so you're looking at all of those things, every play you break down and say, all right, where can we get better? You know, from a, 
from a perimeter standpoint, from a post standpoint, from a rebounding standpoint, blockouts. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's like you don't watch t- games just to watch TV, watch games to enjoy them. You watch to learn. You know, and so you're trying to pick out every little thing that you can get better. Because you look at it, when you play a game, a competitive game in the Atlantic 10, it's always going to come down to two or three possessions, right? Mm-hmm. And how can we get better in those two or three possessions to win that game? You know, so that's how, you know, and so you watch tape of what other teams are doing against you and how you're, what adjustments you can make and vice versa. You know, so it's, it's a chess match. And I think the more tape you can watch and the more you can learn, uh, the better off you'll be. Now, now you've got to be able to to have your players do what you want, you know. And and you know, so you you can't overload their circuits. You know, you can't give them too much. Um, but it's you know, the more you learn, I think, the easier it is for you to teach it. And, and in essence, the bottom line is, you know, we're not professors in, in, in the math department. We're like professors in the athletic department. You know, and the more we learn and know about our, our business, our material, the better we can sell it and teach it to our players. You know, and, and for you, probably, you obviously have more than anybody because you're the head coach. I mean, you watch the stuff, you know it. I mean, so yeah. now you have to decide, like you just said, how much of this am I giving to this guy? Am I going to tell him every single little thing he didn't do or, or every single play the other team's going to run? You can't, or they'll – well, they'll suck at all of it, right? I mean, you yeah, yeah. To like some, yeah. Sometimes one. the more you give them, the 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 worse it is. So you got to really decide, all right? What what are the six or seven plays or actions that team runs, mm-hmm. and, and and so those are the things that you work on. Um, you know, if you overload the circuits, now you you know the kids have smoke coming out of their ears, and and now it's just useless. You know, so you just got to pick out six or seven things that you think are really, really important in beating that team, offensively and defensively. Um, and that's what we try to do. And, and, you know, I'm a big guy and watching tape. You know, I, I, I feel like going into a game, you know, I got to feel really confident that I know what the other team is doing. If not, then, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm more nerv- nervous. Um, and I think our job as coaches is to make sure that the – we are as prepared as possible to give our guys the best chance to win. And if, if we lose because they ran something that we didn't, that we could have saw, but we didn't watch that last tape, then we couldn't live with ourselves. You know, our job is to prepare prepare our team and, but know everything that they're going to run. Um, so we don't get fooled. And, you know, we, the kids put in so much time. It's, you know, as you know, it's a 365 day, thing now and um and we can't lose a game because we're we weren't prepared yeah but to your point you know you might probably beat yourself up the fact that you saw it or you knew it but that might have been one of the two things that you didn't want to overload them with and then it happens and you're like damn it i should have told them about yeah, it. it's Hold more it's more like end of game situations coming out of timeouts you know a play that they would that they ran two games ago or three games ago um that they won the game on or whatever and we could have shown that team in a huddle what they were going to run or what we thought they were going to run. But because we didn't watch that, that eighth or ninth tape, that that's why we lost. You know, it's, it's different if you, if you know, or, or you're prepared and they come out with something entirely different, or they just hit a great shot. They run a, a great play and we do everything we can to, to stop it. But you know, they make a great play. Now, now you can live with it, but you can't live with not you know, losing because you did something. You didn't do something to prepare for it. Right. Right. Hey, I'm looking at the uh, the roster here for you guys, and I know <laughs> nine juniors, two <laughs> sophomores, and one freshman. Now, we're good yes. for this year. We're good for next year. I know along the way you'll bring in some dudes or whatever, but, like, holy yeah. cow, I've never seen that. I mean, yeah, guys, it's – Senior day, take about three hours to get <laughs> out there in the flowers. Yeah, it's just the way it's happened, um, you know, with a couple of guys leaving and, and, and so forth. Um, but I think we're, we're confident, um, you know, with what we have and – um, you know, recruiting is like, it's now, especially when they put in that, that, that rule next year that, you know, kids can leave and not have to sit out a year. I think you build your team now every year, you know, it's just back in the, in, back in the day, you build a program and you build it for, you know, three, four, five, six years, something that you can sustain. I think now because of 
the way the recruiting's going, going with kids are leaving. And, you know, I think you just build it, you know, for that year. All right. And then once the year's over, because of, you know, how the rules are going to be changing, I just think that it's, um, you just never know what's, you know, you can build a program, but then, you know, those young guys that, that aren't playing as much, it's easier for them to leave now if they don't have to sit out a year. There's no re there's nothing that holds them back, you know? So the build a program thinking like, all right, this guy graduates, here comes this sophomore. That sophomore may not be there because he only played 10 minutes a game and, you know, someone is in his ear at home telling him, hey, you got to leave, you know? So I, I think we, we got a good nucleus. We got good young players and, you know, we're going to go with what we have for the next couple of years and see what happens. Not that it matters from what I say. I'm on the broadcaster. I think that 100% sucks and is not right that somebody should be able to do that and just get away now you're the coach who spends hours and hours and days and, and whatever of your entire life recruiting and getting these guys in here and trying to build a program i think that's ridiculous i can't even believe that rule is in place the fact that you don't even know whether you're going to have that guy next year or the year after i mean no. tell me yeah you don't it's, agree it's with not that. i don't there's some people that agree i, I don't agree i think you know one of the things with the rule is you know they always say well if if a coach can leave, why can't a player? And I'm all for if if a, the coach leaves, then those kids should be able to leave and not have to sit out. Sure. But if a coach doesn't leave, then it, those kids just can't get up and leave and 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 not have to sit out a year. It's just gonna it's gonna be and it's and it's happening to the low division one schools where, you know, a kid goes to a low division one school and, and is you know, first team all league or player of the year in, in a lower level. And, you know, the next year they're, they're going high major. It almost like those, those low division ones become like triple A. And once you get a kid good enough, you know, he's not going to help you. He's going to help a higher major team. And I just think that's, that's a travesty and, and not to have to, if that kid's going to leave and not have to sit out, you know, those low division one programs uh, are just going to be devastated. You know, and it's it's just I don't know why, but it's to me it's it, it doesn't make any sense. And and I know the whole student athlete welfare and all that stuff, but I just think that rule, unless the coach leaves, that kid, you know, he can leave, but he has there's got to be some type of penalty. Um, Correct. If the coach if now if the coach leaves, then you know all bets off. I, I think that kid or those kids, because I think a lot of people always say it's like although that kid is not coming to play, you know, because of the coach, he's coming because he loves the school. And, and you know, that's not true. You know, yeah. the kid is coming because of the program, the coach, the head coach, the assistant coach, the, you know, our system, all that stuff, you know, so if that coach gets up and leaves, then those kids should be able to leave and not have to be penalized. But if not, uh, I'm totally against that rule. No, I mean, I am too. Two things. First off, though, number one, I hate the message that it sends, you know, instead yes. of like, oh, hey, you didn't have quite the year. You didn't play as much. Let's battle. Let's get better. Let's talk to the coach. Let's improve. Let's be better in year two. No, just like, oh, screw you. I'm out of here. That's not how life works. You don't know, just get to cut people out and cut people off and leave and move on. Like, you've got to, like, dig in sometimes and get better. So I hate that, number one. That's a terrible message. Number two, I think the NCA because they're so – you know, it, it's not the same. They, they have no consistency with anything like, okay, so-and-so wants to leave because he needs to be close to his grandmother who's ill at home. Fine. Okay. He gets to go. It doesn't have to sit out. Another kid has the same situation. Oh, he does have to sit out. So like, they're not even similar. So now I think the NCAA is like, Hey, well, we'll just let everybody go do whatever they want. Then we won't have to worry about it. I hate Yes. It. And I think you're right. I think that's it. I, I I'm a firm believer. If the coach doesn't leave, and a kid decides to leave, I don't care what reason it is, he, he needs to sit out a year. That's, that, that would, you know, and so there's, there's, no, there's no gray area at all. You know, I just think if a kid leaves because the coach, you know, he hasn't playing or he's not playing enough, that, there shouldn't be a reason why a kid plays right away. I, I don't right. think that. Because I think kids are getting caught up and it's like, and it starts in the AAU programs where – you know, you see kids play like every week they're playing for somebody different because the, the team before I wasn't playing enough. You know, it's almost like everybody wants and I don't know if it's if it's the adult's fault, but it's almost like instant gratification. Right. If I'm if I don't play 25, 30 minutes a game as a freshman, I'm out of there, you know, or, or if I'm not shooting the ball well, the coach benches me or yells at me. Uh, that's the reason for me to leave. And you're right. It's like that's not how 
when you get out into the real world, that's not how it works. It's all about production, you know? And if, if you're not doing something right, then, you know, you're going to get fired. You know, it's just like you can't, it's just the, the instant gratification thing, I, I think, is, 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 is a, a big problem because it's, you're not going to have um, instant success in, in any job. You know, you can't take a job and, and for the first couple of weeks, the, the boss is on you and you say, oh, you get up and leave. That's just not how it works. You got to fight through it. Right, right. And, and, you know, I'm a huge proponent of like kind of looking inside and seeing about what I can do better. How can I be better? What can I do differently? You know, you're right. You go to a job and your boss sucks or you don't like him. You're just like, oh, uh, we'll just get rid of him. Once he gets rid of it, I'll be better. No. How about you make the adjustment? You figure it out. That boss might leave and then another boss might come in. He might suck even worse. So then it's on you to be better. You can't just exactly. like eliminate people. Like, I've, never, I've never seen a good coach not play as best players. <laughs> right. It's like every coach wants to win. And if he doesn't win, he's going to get fired. So that coach is going to play the best guys. And if, you, if, if that kid is not playing, there's a reason why he's not playing. Because he's, he's not one of the best eight or nine guys that are going to help us win. That's, mm -hmm. I've never seen a, a coach not play as best players. I've never seen a coach not want to win. Yeah, no, I'm with you. And, and, and don't even get me started on the money aspect of how the guys should get paid. Uh, listen, you're getting a free education, right? I mean, doesn't that account for anything? Like, you know, we're paying, we're paying your entire ride to come here, and this is the service you provide as a player. And, yeah, they, the school makes money and all this. Like, how much does that open up a can, right? Oh, I'm getting 100000 from this car dealership, and, and that guy stinks, and I'm not getting as much as he's getting. And then what happens if one school has a crap load of money they just want to pay and buy five great players to come to their school and somehow they finagle it where they each get a quarter of a million dollars from some sponsor. Like, I'm sorry. Like, yeah, it's, it's a slippery slope, slope. right? No, it's like they, they get, you know, a lot of these kids get the Pell Grant that they get cost of, uh, of um, attendance. You know, some kids are probably making, you know, $10,000 a year um, on top of their scholarship. Um, but then you hear the other side that, you know, they're working, the school's making millions of dollars. I just don't know if you're going to pay players, how you decide who you're going to play, who you're going to pay and how much you're going to pay. Like, does right. the best player get more than the 12th man? Does, does the women's program get as much as the men? Because there's, there's some women's programs that are more successful than the men's programs. You know, you look at, you know, Connecticut for instance, they've been great ever. Do those girls or women make more money than the men's team? I don't know how you decide how, how you do it. And I think once that money gets in, then it's, there's more reason to, to cheat. You know, I, I don't know. It's a slippery slope. And I, those kids deserve something. I just don't know how you decide how much and who gets it. Yeah, and there better be a cap because if it isn't, I think we already have the example. Just look at pro sports. Oh, I'm so and so. I had you know uh, 20 points a game last year and eight rebounds, and I get blank. Well, this other guy gets yep. 38 points a game and 12 rebounds. Well, he should make more. And if yeah, he doesn't, I, you gotta yeah, get it. I, I don't know how it's going to happen. And, and then you know, you know, the kids' jerseys and you know, what percentage do they get? Yeah, it's I. Stop. I I'd love to talk to somebody that really has a good feel for it. You know, because I don't think anybody does because there's, there's so many variables. And just to decide, decide who gets the money, how much he gets. You know, and then, there's, and then the other thing that's, you know, we talk about culture and chemistry. You know, what happens is, like, you have four really good players on your team. But, you know, three of them are getting X amount of dollars and the fourth is getting a little bit less. Now, what's he going to think? Mm -hmm. You know, yep. and just, like, I should be getting as much as you get. And, you know, does everybody get the same? And I, and where's the money coming from? And yeah, I, yeah, so yeah. many too questions. Much, too much dissension. Like you have enough to worry about as a coach, and 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 in their lives in general that we have to throw this at it too. You know, like I mean, I yeah, hope, yeah. I hope not. Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, for your, all your fans and stuff out there, I mean, which is a, just a great fan base, and I, I love the St. Bonnie fans. Like, give them again what you know at this time. You know, I mean, this is September fifteenth right now. We know how things change, but what can you say to them about? Hey, here's what I'm hearing. Here's what we're hoping to do, and at this point, with what you know and all. Yeah, that. some of our fans probably know more about it than I do. You know, they're they're you know, but I, I think you know it's gonna everything everything's gonna be decided tomorrow. Um, at least they're gonna have a shell of you know when the season's gonna begin. Um, you know, and they're talking right now. What I read was November twenty first. 
uh, which is the Saturday before Thanksgiving, um, which will allow teams to play in those MTEs. Um, you know, it, it just, the concern is it's, you know, a lot of schools are going home in November after, you know, Thanksgiving and not coming back. But then you, you got all these final exams. When are those final exams going to be taken? Because usually over final exams, you can't play or practice or at least play that week. You know, so when is that going to happen? There's so many questions still. You know, I heard something the other day that they were thinking about pushing the final four back until May, you know. Um, so now you start this season in January. It's just so many variables. But what I heard yesterday was November 21st. Um, and then, you know, and just trying to play, I don't know how many conference games and, and, and trying to make, you know, I guess we had a maximum of 28 games that we could play, you know, and 31 with the MTEs. Now they're trying to um, reduce it to 25. Um, and then some, you know, and then you have a minimum amount of games. And I read something today, it was like going to be 13 or 15. Because as you think, if you think about it, like, you know, the Power Five, they got all the, they got money. They don't have to worry about it. Not worry about it, but it's less of a concern. But those lower level schools, the more games you play, the more money you're going to lose. Because not one game is going to make money because the fans aren't going to be in the stands. So if you're a lower level team and the more money you, and, and there's not a lot of the money in the budget's not a lot, the more money they make, the more deficit they're going to fall into. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a catch 22. Everybody wants to play, but there's still a, 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 a fin financial question as well, you know? And that's why like the, the power five, they don't want to play non-conference games because they don't want to pay the, that, that money to the low level teams to come and play the buy money, you know, but those, but those low level teams need that buy money to, to, to travel, to eat, to, to do it the right way. So there's so many questions. I, I, I really don't. I uh, will find out tomorrow. Yeah, that's why it was so tough for like when we heard all the baseball stuff this summer. It's like, yeah, okay, well, there's no fans, so there's obviously no money coming in. And now the owners are just going to want to pay their players millions and millions of dollars to play if they get nothing coming in. It's like, no wonder why it was like from their perspective. And I know they're rich, so we shouldn't worry about them. But like business perspective, you wouldn't just do that. Like you said, hey, let's open up business so we could lose money. <laughs> like, yeah, what, what company is going right. to make more product that doesn't sell? <laughs> it's like, all right, let's, let's, you know, keep on doing it. It's not selling, but let's keep on producing it. <laughs> you know, not, not one. So from a, from a financial standpoint, it's, it doesn't make a lot of sense, you know, <laughs> but at the same time, as you know, you know, we need the final four, you know, that, that, that needs to go, that the March madness needs to go, you know, so everybody can survive. Cause right now it's, 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 it's really difficult. Yeah. The only one that doesn't hurt is a Dunkin' Donuts. They would never you got lose. That right. you know I mean? you got that right. Got that right. I mean, come on. It only costs like two cents to make it. So they're killing it. <laughs> one of these days, we should we let you open up. You should own that Dunkin' Donuts across the street. That should be yours. Come on now. <laughs> uh, I heard it's like $750,000 to get a franchise, I think. Something crazy. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I called up one day just for the heck of it. Wow. Like, this yeah. Is it's, yeah, Dunkin' Donuts is doing pretty well, I think. Yeah, they're okay. They're okay. Hey, um, uh, I man, always great catching up with you. I appreciate yes. it. Um, I hope uh, everything goes well. I'm looking forward to seeing you this season. I know I will. I just uh, we'll we'll figure it out, right? Exactly. And if we don't see each other this season, we'll see each other in the summertime at Bartlett Country Club playing golf. I'm there. I'm there. Open open invitation. Summer 2020 21. 21. Yep. Yes. Thanks, You'll have a great time. All right. Great hey, talking to you, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it.